Jackson, Carol, Anderson, Stephen, Clark, Shirley, Harris, Melissa, Moore, Margaret, Rodriguez, Dorothy, Wilson, Harris, Jones, Barbara, Rodriguez, 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 Susie, Young, Stephen, Tom, Shirley, Amy, Margaret, Paul, Clark, Robinson, Rodriguez. Sarah. The world of online content is becoming a confusing and scary place. It seems like everything these days is just ChatGPT and bots posting scams or cryptic looking pieces of text that have no apparent meaning. And for some reason, on my video about the ZFS file system, I keep getting comments that consist of six random names that have no apparent meaning. Or maybe it does have meaning. Maybe someone is trying to send me a message. So I've collected about 180 samples of these weird YouTube comments that consist of six random names. And in this video, I'm going to use some command line tools to analyze them and see if I can uncover any insights about the purpose of these comments. I collected them from my ZFS video and a few other random YouTube videos. At first, I thought these comments might be from one of my subscribers sending me a coded message because that is something that they do sometimes. But then I actually saw another YouTube video get recommended to me where the creator talked about how they were getting the same comments and proposed their own theory. I googled for this a bit and I found out that there are indeed a bunch of different people getting these comments. Some proposed that the intended purpose of these comments was possibly to discover blocked keywords in the content creator's moderation settings, while others proposed that the spam comments might have their contents changed to read something different at a later time. Some people have also wondered if the comments contain some sort of encoded information. So first of all, let's take a look at what kinds of videos actually get these comments. So let's sort by newest first. And as you can see, over the last few weeks, almost every comment on this video is one of these bot comments. Some of them are names, and some of them look kind of like addresses. Now to try and understand the intention behind these comments, I decided to check out a bunch of different types of videos to see if they appeared on all of them. Here's a random video from a Canadian news channel, and if we go by sort by newest first, and scroll down a bit, alright here's one of those comments right there, and there's another one down here. So next I decided to check out an American news channel like Fox News, and once again, you can see the same type of comments on this channel as well. And the more I started looking for these comments, the more I saw them everywhere. So here's a news channel that's based in the UK. And I can see on this video, it doesn't have any name comments, but it does have one of those address comments. You can even find these comments being posted on old music videos that were posted years ago. If you start by newest first, this looks like one that was posted a few hours ago. Here's another one, and another one. And here's one of those familiar six name comments. And here's yet another one. Now here's a completely different type of video from a Chinese news network, and as you can see, this video has one of those comments as well. So I think it's safe to say that basically every type of YouTube video is being targeted for this type of spam. In my mind, that makes the doxing theory seem a lot less likely. Now in order to collect a large sample of these comments to analyze them, I found one of the easiest sources with the highest concentration to be Canadian news channels. One in particular was CTV News. I also found Global News to be a good source as well. In particular, on their 20 minute daily news updates, I can usually find about 10 of those name comments. So here I have a file containing one large JSON array, and each item in the array contains information about one YouTube comment. And I have a whole bunch of these files, so that gives me a large sample of YouTube comments. And I wrote this Python script to just iterate over all the videos in that list, and for each file it just allows me to iterate over all the comments in that file. And right now it just prints out one comment per line. So if I run this command, I can see that I'm working with a sample of 9,643 comments. And if I run this command, I can see all the comments that mention Linux. So first of all, we're interested in extracting all the comments that have this form. So we're looking for one uppercase letter, followed by a sequence of lowercase letters, a single space, and this pattern of having a capitalized word followed by a space is repeated five times. And finally, it ends with a capitalized word. So for this I just used grep with the dash p flag for Perl compatible regular expressions. And for the regex, this symbol means beginning of line. These two brackets here are used to group this whole pattern together. So here we're looking for one uppercase letter, followed by one or more lowercase letters, and the space, and this is repeated five times, followed by an uppercase letter, and one or more lowercase letters, followed by end of string. So if I run this, now you can see that it's extracted all of those name comments. And this regex turns out to be very effective at finding these comments. Surprisingly, I didn't have any false positives in my sample size of over 9,000 comments. And here you can see that we've extracted 181 of these comments. And for the next category of spam comment, we're looking for something that starts with one or more numbers, followed by two capitalized words. So for that, we're looking for the digits 0 to 9, one or more times, followed by a space, followed by a capital letter, and one or more lowercase letters, a space, another uppercase letter, and one or more lowercase letters, followed by end of string. 
and here's all of the matches. And the last category of spam comment is very similar to the previous one, only it doesn't start with a number. And since two capitalized words is a fairly common YouTube comment, I had to add this extra filter to remove the false positives. And here's the matches that I found for this one. So for doing some analysis, let's focus on the name comments first. One of the first things that I did is use the tr command to replace the spaces with new lines in all those comments. As you can see, this has the effect of putting all the names on individual lines. So this gives us a sample of 1086 names. Next I can use the sort command to sort the names, and here you can see all of the similar names grouped together. The next thing that I did is use the unique command with the dash c flag to count the occurrences of all the names. And here you can see a count for the number of occurrences for each name. What I'd really like to see though is the same list sorted by number of occurrences. And to do that, I can just pipe the output into the sort command again, with the dash n flag. The dash n flag is used to perform a numeric sort, and here you can see the sorted list. So the least common name is James, followed by David, Anna, Daniel, and the most common is Gonzalez, Perez, Moore, Lee, and I can pipe this into wc-l to count the number of lines, so our sample here contains 97 distinct names. Now the important question is what kind of insights can we gather from this data? Clearly the name Gonzalez is a lot more common than many of these names, and the fact that my sample only contains 97 distinct lines makes me think that this is probably not used for block list discovery. If you were trying to use some sort of brute force block list discovery, you'd probably use a much wider distribution of names. I didn't do any statistical analysis on this list, but my intuition tells me that it looks like Gonzalez is being used deliberately a lot more than a name like James or David. Now some people wondered if these names are being used as some kind of code word. The simplest example of something like this would be the Caesar cipher, where every letter in the alphabet is mapped to another one with a shift of three. In this case, it's worth asking, could each name be significant based on its first letter? For this, we can go back to looking at the unique set of names, and then sort that list alphabetically. And here you can see there's really no obvious pattern. There are five names that start with the letter W, eight names that start with the letter S, and similar for other names. Now another place where I started to look for patterns was in the placement of individual names in the comments. So if we just highlight all of the examples of Gonzalez, here you can see them all highlighted. And if you do the same for Perez, and the same for Moore, and at first I did this only for the most common names, and I noticed something interesting. Notice how in the last three examples, none of them contain a line where the second word is highlighted. If you go by zero-based indexing, the name Moore always appears at even offsets. The same is true for Perez and Gonzalez. In fact, you have to go all the way down to the name Ruth to find an example that starts at odd offsets. So at this point, I started to wonder a bit more about how stable that pattern with the offsets was. So I wrote this Python program to count and print the offsets. And here's what the output is. So here's a list of the names that appear at even offsets. So for the name Gonzalez, it appears a total of 30 times, 11 of those times it's at index 0, 10 times it's at index 2, and 9 times it's at index 4. And it appears a total of 0 times at any of the odd offsets. And the same pattern is true for basically all of these names. Scrolling down a bit, you can see the names that appear at only odd offsets. For example, Kimberly appears 4 times at the offset 1, 5 times at the offset 3, and 5 times at the offset 5. And a similar pattern is true for the rest of these names. Now you've probably noticed that there's one outlier here, and that is the name Thomas. It appears in both lists because it has both odd and even offsets. Specifically, it mostly has even offsets, but it appears two times with an index of 5. Of the over 1,000 occurrences of these names, these two occurrences of the name Thomas are the only exceptions to the odd or even rule. It's not clear to me what this could mean, but I do think it's an interesting clue. I also think it's interesting that the number of occurrences for the name Thomas appears right around the boundary for where the odd offsets start. I also think it's interesting to take a look at the number of distinct names that appear in the even or odd category. So here I have the same output that we were looking at from the previous script, and I'll just delete these header lines, and I'll delete the odd offsets, and I'll do the opposite for the odd file. So now if I look at the even file, I see this, and if I look at the odd file, I see this, and if I count the number of lines in the even file, I see this, exactly 32. And if I count the number of lines in the odd file, I see this. Now this number is close enough to 64 that it makes me wonder if there's something going on with powers of 2. As we said before, the name Thomas has mostly even offsets, but it shows up in this file because it has two odd offsets as well. If we delete the name Thomas, now you've got 65 lines. Ideally, I would have liked to have collected a much larger sample size, but I only have so much time to waste on this topic, so I can't say for sure if powers of 2 is important here, but I do think that the 32 is probably statistically significant. Something else that I thought was interesting to look at was the placement of the least common names. Here's the single reference to the name James, 
This example is interesting for another reason, because it contains a name that occurs twice. Reviewing all occurrences of duplicate names is also an interesting thing to look for. Here I have the same command that we saw before to extract the name comments, and this little piece of shell script here reads them in line by line. This part here finds any duplicate names that occur on a given line, and this part here iterates through the duplicates and prints them. So you can see a number of examples that contain the same name more than once. In fact, this example contains two duplicates. Observations like this one make the blockless discovery hypothesis seem even less likely. Switching gears back to the other category of comment, I don't really think I have enough examples here to extract any insights. I've googled a few of these, but I don't think they're actually real addresses. For example, when I search for 171 42 Muller Station, I just get redirected to Muller Station Road, and this one here, 293 Haney Mission, doesn't match anything and the choice of first and second word make it look like they're selected from a similar word list. For the last category of comment, I have even less examples. These ones look just like the second category without the number at the start. Now while I was researching this topic, I found another similar comment on this video. But unfortunately, within a couple hours of seeing that comment, I returned to find that they had turned off comments on this video. But I did happen to save that comment, and this is what it looks like. And you can see the capitalization pattern is the same with the names, except for the second word is not capitalized. Now this could be an unrelated troll comment, but if it's actually part of the same spamming operation, then it might narrow down some of the possibilities of what they're trying to do. And while I was looking through the comments on my how to make a CPU video, I also noticed this comment. This comment has absolutely nothing to do with my CPU video, but it looks like yet another category of spam comment on the same theme. Now one of the last things that I want to take a quick look at is the usernames. So here I have a Python script that searches for the name comments, and whenever it finds one, it prints out the username. And if I run that script, here's what the output looks like. And of course I can pipe that into sort. And I can pipe that into unique-c to count the number of unique occurrences for each username. And I can pipe that list into sort-n to sort by number of occurrences. So here you can see that one user is responsible for 26 of these comments, and a handful of other usernames have 10 or more, and there's quite a few here who only have one comment. And we can pipe this list into wc-l, and we can see that there are 44 distinct users that are responsible for these over 180 comments. Next I'll change the script a bit. So now it prints out the username, a comma, and then the video ID. So now the output looks like this. And I can use this command to sort by the username again. So here you can see that the most prolific commenters are posting these comments on a wide variety of videos. So, putting this all together, what can we say about the possible motive behind these spam comments that consist of names? The first theory was that these were being used to discover blocked keywords to possibly reveal the identity of the creator. One argument against this theory is the odd and even offset pattern that we saw. If the position doesn't matter, why sample the names differently in this way? Upon doing some of the final edits to this video, it occurred to me that for the even offsets, the names appear to be almost exclusively surnames, and for the odd offsets, the names appear to be exclusively first names. This could also explain why Thomas appears in both lists, in two cases as a first name, and in the rest as a last name. This observation makes me a bit less inclined to think that there's information being encoded here. The comments may be as simple as a random last name followed by a random first name, repeated three times. Another argument against this theory is why allow duplicate names in a given comment. Given how many resources this would take, one would assume that the bot programmer would make their algorithm a bit more efficient, and simply check for duplicates. Another observation is that some names in the list appear to be more common than random. However, this could also happen if the names that are searched for have changed over time. Another observation that makes this theory seem less plausible is this comment. This spam comment looks very similar to the name comments, but it has nothing to do with names or addresses. And similarly for this one. Knowing what country that someone lives in doesn't exactly narrow down their address that much. Ideally, I would have collected a much larger sample size, but if the pool of possible names is indeed on the order of 100 or so names, then that would make it very unlikely to actually discover someone's blocked keywords at random. However, if there's a very small list of people who they're actually looking for who are on this list, and they've decided to literally search every YouTube channel, then that could be more plausible. But you'd assume that they'd at least filter out news sites. Another theory that was proposed was that this is just someone testing out a new botnet and trying to reverse engineer YouTube's new spam detection rules for later use in posting other types of spam. This theory is consistent with the variety of seemingly related spam comments that we saw. However, this theory doesn't necessarily explain the odd and even offset pattern that we saw. It would be much easier just to pick six random names. Or it could even be that the odd and even offset technique has something to do with evading YouTube spam detection. 
And one of the last important questions is, do the name comments contain some type of encoded information? This possibility cannot be excluded or confirmed based on the available information. Ideally, one would analyze a larger sample size of these comments. The odd and even offset pattern implies that there is indeed some deliberate, non-trivial encoding happening here. However, if the intention was to obscure the data, it begs the question of why it wasn't encrypted into pure statistical entropy instead of being encoded with this obvious pattern. The fact that there are exactly 32 distinct names that have even offsets is very interesting. If you wanted to encode information into some kind of alternate symbol space, using an alphabet that had a size that's exactly a power of 2 would make your symbol translation code much simpler. The sequence of names is reminiscent of number stations that are used by intelligence agencies to covertly communicate with spies in the field. However, there is nothing that suggests that's what's going on here. If you find this topic interesting, you should definitely check out this YouTube channel. Even if these comments do contain information, it could likely still be impossible to decrypt if a one-time pad has been used. So, in conclusion, there are some interesting patterns in these comments, but I've wasted enough time on this topic, and I'm not going to think about it again unless this video gets 10 billion views.